Hey y'all, it's your girl Katura, and this video is going to be interesting. What do I bring to the hospital? So before we get into this video, many of you ha have asked me for this video. I'm sorry I took so long to bring it, but I wanted it to be right. I wanted it to be authentic and just this is why I'm doing this whole setup this way. So before we go into this video, like, subscribe, comment um, to everyone who follows me, new and um, old. I wouldn't say old, but new and reoccurring. Thank you so much. Um, and I know this video is a little bit different than what I've been doing, but when I first started YouTube, it was really geared toward, you know, my sicklers. I do have sickle cell um, and knock on wood, I've been blessed to not have to see the hospital in about, I want to see it a year now. Um, so that's amazing and I want to go on too. So I really have a lot of energy today and I'm knocking out these videos Thank you for coming to this video. So without further ado and me rambling, let's get into what you should bring to the hospital and how you should pack. Okay, so years ago I had a pail and it was a pail that was given to me by one of my mother's co-workers and it was a Katura's hospital pail. I'm going to show it to you guys at the end of the video. So stick towards the end of the video so I can show you that pail. I filled it with like candles now but before it had magazines and like um granola bars and just really comforting things and i just thought it was amazing i think i was in high school when i had to go to the hospital for a, a, it was really bad um i think i had an uh wasn't no it wasn't acute chest i had pneumonia in the lungs and it was crazy but to feel the love was amazing and that to me like i've always known what to pack uh from my hospital bag but of course growing up with sickle cell you know you my mother was always like grabbing things like what do you need this is that and packing it um growing up and being now a mother for myself i have to know like what i need to pack what's comforting to me and um what i'm gonna start to do is you should already have like a hospital bag ready so that way if you're sick you don't have to think about like oh my god i gotta get this i gotta get that and if you can't walk because a lot of times sickle cell you know it causes your leg to swell if you are having a crisis in your leg or your back the pain is excruciating so you don't have time to be you know opening drawers and looking through things you just really want to grab and go um on top of that i know um, it sounds a little crazy but if you know you know i'm actually packing a bag i have like a lot of little bags that i'm going to be packing but the second bag i'm going to pack is like just an emergency bag like you know i always see on the news this is off track but stick with me because it's going to tie in that you know people's homes burn down and they don't they couldn't take anything and it's like god forbid if the knock on wood house burns down or just anything happens and i have to grab and go you know a hurricane a flood i think you should always have a bag of just like a couple knickknacks to just get over the hard time you know have a flashlight have a first aid kit you know have a blanket you know maybe have a picture or a photo that you know you'll never get back things of sentimental values you know a couple of dollars you know just food for thought but we'll get into that so this is my bag that I take to the hospital. Um, you can carry it this way, kind of looks like a baby bag. And then this way. And it has a lot of really cool compartments back here, water here, this part here. Just showing you guys the bag. I got this from DSW, if you care. I don't know if they have it anymore. But it has a lot of cool compartments. Nothing is in the bag because I'm showing you this video. Um, so things that I carry to give me comfort. One is I do not like wearing the hospital gown when they put it on me. I literally be fine and I'm like, ah, don't wanna wear it. Like, but to take your x-ray, the doctor has to get up under there. He can get up under there with my outfit that I'm gonna be wearing because I've done this before. I'm not new to this, I'm true to this. Let's go. <laughs> so yeah, I never wear the hospital garment and if you're like me and you don't want to, bring some cute pajamas. I always feel like I'm gonna be hot in the hospital because I put blanket on top of blanket so I always bring like a cute little short set but if you're into like more of a pants thing cool so the first thing you should bring is comfy pajamas second things whether you're a man or a woman you know because nowadays y'all guys have better hair than us it's long y'all braid up and do whatever tie that hair down sis because those pillows are not silk and they will eat your hair up I like back in the days I would like not carry a head wrap and I would just see you know the pills are always white and I would just see my little ends on the pillow and I'm just like no and I would get out of the um hospital and like immediately try to book a hair appointment to make myself feel alive and feel good and you know trim my ends so definitely wrap your hair if you can um this is not a fashion show you're in the hospital so grab what you can and wear this the whole time it also just you know nothing gets in your hair the 
you know, all the germs and everything, you're protecting yourself. So the second thing would be a scarf. Make sure it's silk. Um, of course, y'all should, I shouldn't have to tell y'all this, but bring some underwear, you know. I feel like you never know as a sickler how long you're going to be admitted. It could be a couple hours, it could be a day, it could be weeks. So because you don't know, I would always say just to bring like five. And if you need to, you can always have your family run back and get you some. Or you can wash it at the hospital. But, you know, it's always good to have more than less. Next, bring some snacks okay if you know you know being in the hospital a lot of times you know you don't have money on you because you really just came and you don't have money for the vending machines nowadays it's we're in 2020 so they do accept card but you know maybe they might not have the snack that you want or you know for me a lot of times my stomach is hurting me i'm nauseous so um ginger ale and sprite help me and a lot of times they don't really like to give you soda or anything until they have permission from the doctor when you and i already know like I can drink I can eat like stop so I'm in here hungry you're in the waiting room it's been four hours you're getting aggravated having something on your stomach can take your mind off the pain just a little bit so bring your favorite snack um, if you do get admitted a lot of times you know the nurses will hook you up with whatever soda or drink you want but a lot of times you know they run out of your drink or another patient got the last Sprite so it's good to always have your own so your own snacks always work next it's good to have your own toiletry um if you use the hospital towels and rags i'm not here to judge my preference is to make it as comfortable um make an uncomfortable situation as comfortable as you can so for me being in the hospital is not fun i want to get out as quick as i can but if i'm going to be in there i'm going to feel as comfortable as i you know possibly can and bring in my rags and towels from home just make a difference for me so if you're anything like that it's cool to have your own you know towels and rags second not second what are we at one two three four five six next heating pad i always bring a heating pad with me because when i used to not bring a heating pad and ask for one they would give you like the little ones for the infants that you can pretty much put in the palm of your hand to warm you up or because they don't want to be blamed for any like electrical problems you being burnt um they give you one that has water in it and i feel like that does nothing for me it doesn't get hot i need my heating pad to be hot to the point that it is burning me and i'm like this to try to fix it you know and it really just helps my pain i can put it in my back my legs wherever my pain is and just feel a sense of comfort from that so if you can bring a heating pad with you next headphones never thought i would say headphones but headphones because a lot of times you in a hospital you're lucky if you get your own private room when i get my own private room i'm like ah, ah, you know but if not you don't want to hear the lady next to you moaning and groaning because she's in so much pain and they haven't brought her medicine in four hours get your sleep drown out the sound you know um a lot of times you guys are sharing a tv you might not want to share a tv and you just might want to listen to a podcast so don't forget to bring your headphones essential next i'm just gonna jungle this and bungle this all together bring your own medicine bring your own um you know your anything for pain control y'all know i live by my nutmeg and my bio freeze and i say to bring your own medicine because um a lot of times you're in the waiting room for hours and they just like to give us sicklers tylenol and it's like yo i came to the hospital because my pain is at a level 10. you know they like to say what's the level of your pain from a 1 to 10. it's a 10 and beyond and because of that i'm here because i can no longer be stoic and handle my pain so do you really think these tylenols which i call candy is gonna work for you no like they don't really want to give you um you know your recommended dosage until you get in the back until you're seen by a doctor and that process can take a long time so if you bring your own medicine you know you can it can alleviate the pain just a little bit and it can save you because with sicklers we really go from one to ten and it can be like you come in for a crisis and the pain just hops into an acute chest so if you can control that it's good to bring your meds let your doctors know don't be ashamed because a lot of times they will ask you you know when was the last time you took your pain medication and i've known a lot of sicklers to deny or not really tell like you know that yes i just had my medication about four hours ago because they feel like they're going to be denied access to getting you know their dilaudid or morphine or whatever helps them get through their pain um, which is not necessarily true which is why you have to be an advocate for yourself and know your rights in the hospital so that's that
Um, next. I always like to bring a sweater or I have a throw cover. Let me show you guys this stuff. Okay. So I always like to have a nice jacket, a sweater, or a throw. Both. I really like comfort. I really like to feel like I'm home, but I'm not home, if that makes any sense. Um, and I feel like the covers that they give you are really thin, and sicklers, we are anemic, so we get cold easily. And, you know, waiting on them hot blankets can take a while, and after, like, 20 minutes, the heat goes, it's gone. So if you have your heating pad and you have this, good night, baby. After the doctor sees you and you're stabilized and they've got your pain under control, you gonna get some sleep so try to you know give yourself as much comfort in a bad situation as much as you can last but not least i'm gonna put them all together just bring things that can take your mind off the pain bring your cologne or your perfume smell good you know the old timers always say it if you look good you feel good and it's not easy like i said it's not a fashion show when you go to the hospital you're not worried about your hair and your makeup you're worried about getting better and getting out but you know you start to feel a little bit better you know maybe day two day three you know you guys you and the doctor are negotiating how you can get out of this you know hey doc i'm starting to feel better can we you know think about letting me go on friday and you know you might have a little bit of strength to spray your perfume and start to feel good you know you got your nice wash you got out of the shower you know probably took a little bad bath sponge bath is what they call it and you want to smell good i know for me smelling good is like always a thing like i can be like in the hospital i'm like i someone passing me my perfume like I I just want that I don't know some candy but that should have went with food like just take your mind off of it get you a good read bring your laptop bring your phone don't forget your charger okay that should have been a thing too don't forget your charger your phone you know like you can watch movies on here there's so much to do to just take your mind off the pain adult coloring books um you know when you feel better don't push yourself to it but a lot of times you know the tv might not work like you have a tv in your room and you're ready to watch a movie or something to take your mind off the pain and like you have one channel and it's the news that's working and it can become very boring and lonely and you stay in your own mind and you know you think about the pain even more so if you keep yourself busy you know reading reading can make you fall asleep so if you know a lot of us sticklers we are we have insomnia and you know the pain doesn't make it any better and we're up to like 6 a.m in the hospital and by the time we go to sleep they're up at like 4 a.m ready to draw blood or they're waking us up because they have to draw blood and they have to collect this and collect that and the doctors are starting their rotation at 8 a.m so the hospital is not as peaceful as y'all think like <laughs> i'm like when does anybody rest like you know like the nurses are coming in to take care of you they're coming in to take care of your whoever your roommate is you know the the phlebotomists are coming in at 4 a.m anywhere from 4 to 6 a.m the nurses and doctors are starting the rotation at 7 and they're coming in the hi good morning okay well nurse becky is leaving and i am nurse lala okay if you need anything you call me i'm gonna go fill out my chart and i will be back to get you situated and you're there like just like like you know like the phlebotomist just came and gave me four sticks because they couldn't find my vein and i don't even care who you are or what nurse you know you might be sad to see your og nurse who's been holding you down leave because you don't know rebecca now but it's just those things that we go through and i guess you know that would be like a cool story time like what it is for a sickler like what is our hospital experience like that would be cool but hopefully you know this was cool you know always bring your water you gotta put that in there my mom will kill me bring get some water bring some water with you try to make this experience as best as you can stay on top of it pack a bag so you can grab and go make it easier on yourself and yeah i hope you guys liked everything if there's i hope i didn't leave out anything but this is really what i bring um toothbrush toothpaste things like that it's not really like a necessity because most hospitals have like a little welcoming kit you know and they give you lotion and all that stuff and deodorant but you know try to bring some home into a non-home situation i love you guys as always stay positive to all my sicklers we can get through this we will get through this we are warriors for a reason and if you made it to this part of the video thank you so much for watching this is the pale that inspired the whole video so yeah thank you and i hope you guys like this video please like it comment and let me know are you ss as a 
um how old you are when's the last time you've been to the hospital how'd you find me what videos would you like to see about sickle cell as i'm diving into that more and don't forget to like my social media at tura21 follow me on instagram the link is below and it'll take you straight there and i think that's all i have to say peace